let's go into the word of God. Hallelujah. I want you to know that I'm not going to take much time, but let God speak to us this day. Hallelujah. I'm taking my text from St. Mark's Gospel. It's a familiar a familiar passage, St. Mark's Gospel, chapter 4, from 35 to 41. It's already, it's already on the screen. Amen. Bishop Fiano, I want you to stand and read it for me. From the screen. On the same day, when the evening had come, he said to them, let us cross over to the other side. 37. Now, when they had left the multitude, they took him along in the boat as he was. And all that little boats were also with him. And a great windstorm arose and the waves beat into the boat so that it was already filling. But when but he was in the stem asleep on a pillow and they awoke him and said to him, teacher do you not care that we are perishing? Then he arose and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, peace be still and the wind ceased and there was a great calm. Amen. But he said to them, Why are you so fearful? How is it that you have no faith? And they feared exceedingly and said to one another, Who can this be? That even the wind and the sea obey him. Amen. Amen. May the Lord bless his word into our hearts. The Bible said here, they were on the other side ministering. And when the evening came, he said, oh, boys, jump into the boat and let's cross over. You know, each time God wants to take you to a different level and you are excited and you are moving, that is when hell gets loose. He wants to make sure that what God spoke to you is a lie. But God can never lie. God's words are yea and amen. Say, boys, let's go. Let's leave this side. We have dwelt on this side enough, according to Deuteronomy. We have dwelt on this side enough. We have more challenges. We have dwelt here too much. We have done what we are here to do. But let's cross over. And they all jumped into the boat. They said there were, there were other ships or other boats that followed them. But the one that the disciples are in, Jesus was there. And I want to give you five basic things that will make you succeed this year. Or five basic principles that will make your life count. Five principles that will make you a different person. Whether you are at home, you are married, you are not married. You are working in the ministry or not. You are working in the society or not. You, you, you have your own business. Whatever you are, these five things will guide you in the name of Jesus. He said, boys, let's go to the other side because we have dwelt here too long. 
And maybe you have been in that business. It goes up, it comes down. It goes up, it comes down. It is time for you to say, Father, what is going on? I am the head and not the tail. I have labored for this business. Maybe you are a wife, you are in the house, you've been married for years and no children. And you know in Africa, when you are married after six months, everybody wants to see this. In Africa, because I remember when I got married to my husband. First year, no issue. Second year, no issue. Third year, no issue. Fourth year, ah! I had to go back into my room and say, God, you gave us the names of these children. People are asking, what is going on? What is happening? My husband will lay hands on people and they become pregnant. And here he has a wife at home, no issue. What is going on? And you know, as man is, you started questioning God. Abraham did the same thing. When Abraham left all of Chaldeans, God spoke to him and said, Abraham, your children will be as the sand on the, on the ground. 75 years, no issue. Sarah was stricken of age. But if you read Genesis 17, you will see how God blessed Abraham. And if you read fire in his bone, you will see how God blessed us. Listen, if God has promised you, he is not man that he will lie. Others may lie to you. Circumstance may lie to you. Your people may lie to you. But our God cannot lie. Maybe you are here, you've been married for years, no issue. I want you to take this time as an opportunity and hold God by the hem of his garment. Jesus said, boys, let's go over. Because if he says go over, you will not go under. This year, you will reach your destination. You will reach where God has promised you in the name of Jesus. Stand to your feet. Put your hand on your head. The year has just begun. January just left. This is February. I want you to put your hand on your head and speak to the womb of 2018. And say, 2018, everything that God has here marked for me, this year, they must come. La Karabashatata. Brigadobogo Zeketetele. Everything that God has in stock ah, for you in 2018. This is February. February, March, April, May, June, July, August, September, October, November, December. Ria Babaka Shande. Every promise. Every promise shall come to pass in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I speak to the east. Put your hand on your head. I speak to the east where the sun rises. 
Whether we like it or not, every day the sun must rise. Whether the devil likes it or not, the sun must rise. Father, I speak to the east where the sun rises. Everything that will make your children not to rise above principalities above this day, I cut them off. You will exceed in the name of Jesus. I speak to the West where the sun sets, where it takes its rest. This year, you shall not run heter scatter. There shall be rest in your soul. There shall be rest in your home. There shall be rest in your business. In the name of Jesus. I speak to the womb from the south where our legs are. Every hidden treasure, the gold, the diamond, the oil, the gas, every wealth that God has put under this earth. When you speak this year, they shall answer you. I said they shall answer you. All the resources that God has put on this planet earth, they must answer you. I speak to the womb of 2018. Upstairs. That is where you live, our God. I decree and I declare that we shall get our directions from you. Our instructions shall come from you. Our protection shall come from you. Your presence shall be over us. When we go out, we will experience your presence. When we come in, we will experience your presence. No stray bullets will pierce our side. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. For answering our prayer. In the name of Jesus. Lift your hands to heaven and celebrate your victory. Celebrate your victory. Celebrate your victory. In the name of Jesus. From February to December is for you. When you call, he will answer you. All your dreams, all your visions, all your aspirations, they shall all line up one after the other. This year, in the name of Jesus, no power will stop it. No devil from the pit of hell will stop it. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. It is done. I say it is done. Be seated. This year is a different year in your life. All your aspiration. If, if uh, none has come to pass yet, I want to tell you they are on their way. They are coming your way. Those of you that are not married, be expecting your husband. Men that are not married, be expecting your wife. Amen. If you don't have a job, be expectant. Amen. Write a fresh application Amen. and submit to the ministry and they will call you for interview. Amen. I decree that in the name of Jesus. Five basic things. Number one. 
follow the laid down procedures in your home, in your church, in where you are, in your kiosk, in your business. I know you have laid down rules. When you follow them, it shall be well with you. The structures that are down, that God has set down for you, he told his disciples, boys, let us go. Let us go. Let us cross. And the boys, they all obeyed. I know some grumbled and said, ah, we are okay here. You know, that's man's mentality. We are all right here. We've been uh, well served here. And there are signs and wonders all over here. We are okay. He said, let's go. And they all jumped into the boat. In this ministry, purpose center. If you come here and you are here for two, three years and you don't know your purpose, you better ask afresh. Because everyone speaks the same language. I sat there. The pastor came, spoke the same language. The other one came, spoke the same language. The other man came, spoke the same language. I want you to know that there is a purpose why you are here. Purpose in your life. Purpose for you as a child of God. Purpose in your business. It's all here. You must, if you want to succeed this year, you must follow laid down structure. If our bishop says we are going to we are going to Mombasa for crusade, yes, we are all going. If he says no, we are not going to Mombasa, we are going to any other village. There are structures, leadership structures for here. If you want to prosper, if you want to make a difference, if you want to make your life count, you must follow proper structure. Let's go to the other side. That is the voice of a leader, a confident leader. Who knows where you're supposed to be? Who knows where you are going? And who knows where you get there? And I know that our bishop here has confidence. Confidence in his God. Confidence in the scriptures. And confidence in you. So when you, lay, when, when you follow the laid down rules... I want you to know this year you will make a difference in the name of Jesus. Number two, verse 36. It says, be willing and prepare to leave your comfort zone. Ooh, this is hard for Christians. Very, very difficult for Christians. No, no, uh, no, 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 pastor. We are okay here. We are all right here. See, the church is full. We are uh, in fellowship. There is no reason to go look for a bigger plot. Who said? You are the mixed multitude. You must, this year, if you want to be significant, if you want to be relevant, and you want to be all that God has asked you to do. For this year, you must be prepared to leave your comfort zone. The comfort zone is where backbiters are. Comfort zone is where backsliders are. Comfort zone is where grumblers are. Comfort zone is dream killers are. Comfort zone is where destroyers are. May you not be one. Amen. I said, may you not be one. Amen. Follow laid down structures 
and be relevant. I tell you, if you spend three years in this church, you can pastor a mega church. As I sat there, God spoke to me. I said, there are, there are some of you here who are supposed to be pastoring, but you are afraid. He, how can I go? How can I stand? How can I stand without Pastor Kula? No, 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 no. I, I am confident. I, I am satisfied walking behind him. It is good. But there are some of you that God will send to different places. Men and women. Under this ministry, you must be prepared. Isaiah 54, verse 1, 2 to 4 says, All of you that have not given birth, sing, sing and rejoice. When I was passing through my challenges, I will come to church, I will sing, I will dance, but inside me, I was dying. Because you can't tell a woman that has not given birth to sing and rejoice because she has not given birth. Men and women will label such a one a barren woman. They called me all sorts of names. They said, we don't know who is a man amongst the two of you, whether your husband is the man or you are the man. We want to see children. But the word of God says here, sing. Hallelujah. For there is something coming. God is coming through for you. Enlarge. Stretch. Make your curtains may be your tent. And you know, when I read it, I was thinking, maybe God spoke to my husband. I mean, when I got married, we, we, we got married in a rented house. Two rooms, a parlor, toilet, and all the conveniences. That was where we are. But after six months, my husband purchased a bigger land. And he said, Margaret, let's go build. I said, my dear, we are just two in this two-bedroom flat. It's too big for us. He said, no. I want you to see with the eyes of God. And we went, bought a land, a hundred by hundred, and started building. And today we live in a palace. Amen. Amen. Sing, rejoice, all you that are barren. Sing, rejoice with your mind. The one that started the business and the business is not going well. Sing, rejoice. Sing, rejoice, because what you thought has not come to pass. Sing, rejoice. Sing, rejoice, because the chaos you started is dying. Sing, rejoice, for something big is coming. God is coming through for you. You say, well, I have been here. God, you know what I'm passing through. Yes, he knows. God is going to collapse time for your sake. I say God is going to collapse time, compress time for your sake. In John 2, Jesus was invited to uh, a farm fair, marriage. The wife got finished and the mother went and said, Mom, uh, uh, son, they don't have wine. And, the, and, and Jesus said, what is my business, woman? And she left. Whatever, the, whatever he tells you, do it. And all of a sudden, 
Jesus said, feed those water pots. And there with water, and then drink out of it. <laughs> you know, to make wine, it takes 10, 15 years. The wine you serve on the table, to make it from the scratch, it takes about 10 to 15 years. But you know, when Jesus is in your boat, <laughs> I say when Jesus is in your boat, he will collapse time. He will collapse and compress time so that what took others 10 years will not take you 10 years. God is going to collapse time for you. You know why? Because he purchased you. You know why? He gave you all his name. You know why? If he could not hold, if God could not hold Jesus Christ, than to bring him here to die for you, God will collapse time for you. This year, God will collapse time for me. Where I have not succeeded before, this year, I will succeed. Open your mouth and pray. Open your mouth. Brigada bagasa talebo. Le brigabo zantala babaha. Thank you, King of Glory. Li brigada bo zata. La kendele de de boshita. This year, you will matter. This year, you will matter. This year, God will collapse time because he died for you. Because he completed it at the cross of Calvary. This year, sickness will not follow you in the name of Jesus. This year, oh yes, Libri, I want you to pray. When you begin loving what God loves and hating what he hates, he can trust you with some secrets. Do you know there is no distance in the spirit? When a word is released, whosoever is available can run with it. They don't have to be physically present there to receive it. The password to enter anything of God is thanksgiving. Strong men are brought down by small things because strong men underestimate small things. You cannot do God's will your way and make it.